The beauty of entrepreneurship is it forces you to evolve heavily as a human being. And if you manage it properly, it is one of the most beautiful experiences you will ever have in your lifetime. And your children are going to be witness to this. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the five main challenges that single parent entrepreneur slash business owners face. Let's start off with number one, own your single parent status. Now, in today's society, though single parents aren't looked down upon, perhaps the way they were in the past, the truth is generally when you are in fact a single parent, it's because there were irreconcilable differences. And many times things are still very fresh and things are still being reconciled, whether it be personally or in the courts. It's a tough road to navigate through. Co-parenting is no easy task. And of course, there's that financial component. So whereas the waters of entrepreneurship are incredibly scary and treacherous, when you do have a support system, i.e. your family, well, imagine how difficult that is when you newly no longer have that support system. And even worse, if there's friction around what used to be a support system. So if you've already undertaken your entrepreneurship and you're already in business for yourself, well, the first thing I suggest you do is while you are adjusting to your new norm of being a single parent entrepreneur. You must, must, must invest in your mental toughness. You must do an entire rehaul. You must unlearn and relearn and do an incredible amount of personal development. And I mean fast. And you're wondering how can you possibly fit this into your 14 hour days plus showing up as a parent while building your business, right? It's incredibly difficult. But if you don't do it immediately, you will certainly pay the price. Because remember, as an entrepreneur, you have to control absolutely everything within your power that you can control. And the one thing that you can control is you. The other fact is entrepreneurship in 2023 relies heavily on your brand, on your social media presence, and how you show up to serve others. And I can absolutely speak for myself that one of the main things that I struggled with in my early years and even to date in entrepreneurship is it's very face forward. You have to show up every day and not only look the part, but you have to be on, if you will. And that's incredibly hard to do when you've spent the night before crying, stressing, or the day of being sabotaged because your ex doesn't want to keep their word and help you with, you know, picking up the child for, you know, an unforeseen speaking engagement or what have you. Trust me, I've been there and it wasn't easy. And to date, I still don't handle it gracefully. It's incredibly difficult. And I oftentimes wonder that if that wasn't my situation, that if I hadn't had to navigate through two very messy divorces, only one of which involved the child, but what could I have been? What could I have been and how could I have shown up had so much of those relationships not consumed all of my time? And so that's why we revert back to the conversation about really investing heavily on your mental toughness and your fortitude, stacking undeniable wins because you can't control what others think about you. And for those of you who are entrepreneurs, you know that pesky imposter syndrome. It's a full-time job for you to control what you think about yourself. So if we were to do a time analysis, you would realize that you don't have the bandwidth to be concerned about what others think about you, including your ex. Number two, ditch and or block toxic influences at all costs. 
So this is kind of a part two to number one, but it expands past your ex. You are going to have more haters than you have fans at first while you are trying to find your voice and while you are building the undeniable proof that you are great at what you do. There are always going to be naysayers and the loudest naysayers are generally the people that are closest to you and they also know the most about you. They know all of your weaknesses. They know your triggers. They know your insecurities. And again, this day and age, building a business is no longer private. You do rely heavily on showing up on public platforms, whether it's speaking engagements, social media, et cetera. And there is nothing worse, nothing worse than having individuals who don't mean you well at all that are watching you, that are critiquing you, that are talking about you, that are sliding in your comments, that are sliding in your DMs, telling you that you're a fake or a fraud, or if you are in fact still really at odds with your ex, getting threats on how they're going to ruin you, on how they're going to ruin your reputation, on how they're going to destroy anything you build. I mean, obviously that's an extreme, but I've personally lived through extremes and I've also seen others live through it too. And it's not easy again, because individuals who decide to dedicate their lives to entrepreneurship, they already wake up every day and get kicked in the face by life within the framework of their business. So then after the fact to have no safe place to go, no support network, no place to be greeted and reassured. It's incredibly difficult. Number three, a big one, include your kids in the business. Obviously, harder than it sounds, especially if they're super young, but start to plant the seeds as to the why to the why of the business, why mommy or daddy operates differently than your traditional W-2 employee, why your schedule differs, why your level of focus differs, why you engage in so much personal and professional development, why it seems as if you never have a day off. And on your off time, you're still always working. You're still on. You're still always engaged and not unplugged. But my advice to you is to put together a calendar And if you're new to entrepreneurship or business, this can be incredibly difficult because this is your first rodeo. You haven't lived this. So you don't know what the timeline looks like. But what I will tell you is not every year is the same. And you are in charge. There are some years where you can really go after sales, where you can really go after your income. There are other years where you can pull back a little once you have things operating like a well-oiled machine and maybe don't go as hard on the sales, thus allowing you to engage in more family time. But be very communicative about all of these things, all of these whys. Talk about the freedoms of entrepreneurship. Yes, you do end up working more than your average W-2 employee, two or three times more. And yes, it is incredibly taxing on your mental. Again, circling back to how you have to build yourself into an incredibly strong and resilient person. But once you get over that first initial hump and you start to actually make money and you start to be more confident in what you're doing, possibilities and opportunities open up. So be mindful when that happens and circle back and explain to your kids, look, look, this is proof. We did this and now look at the outcome. And with this outcome, with this blessing that we were able to do as a team, let's get together and decide how we are going to either treat ourselves or set ourselves up for success by making positive decisions for additional growth for maybe another cycle, another round. Having these conversations and showing your children the cause and effects, being able to solve complex problems and coming out on the other side successfully is going to give them so much more than the ordinary lessons that you would be sharing with them living a traditional life as a W-2 employee. But remember, you have to structure this. You have to create the narrative and you have to ensure that there are results and undeniable proof that your logic was correct. So number four, diving a little deeper into the seasons of entrepreneurship. 
I did speak about creating a calendar, a projection of what your business growth looks like and your milestones. But there is actually a step that you need to do for you personally before you create that business calendar framework for the future. And it's sitting down and making a list of your beliefs, of your beliefs around family and your beliefs around your children, what you believe at your core, whether they're good or bad, you must write it down. Because when you do part two, to do the logistics, if you will, I want you to be able to tie it back into your core beliefs and emotions. Because remember, as an entrepreneur, you're driving this boat. This business, this experience can look like anything you want it to, but you must be intentional. You must be intentional to the behind the scenes why. And yes, not everything is going to go the way you think. And even if you do have your list of core beliefs of what you want to ensure takes place within your family unit or you showing up as a parent, because at the end of the day, that is priority, but it can be interworked with the business strategy, but you must take the initiative to do so and tie it in early and then circle back often to see if your logic was true or false, if you're getting the outcome that you desire. And then of course, as you continue to grow, your beliefs around so many things are going to change. What you believe now is not what you're going to believe in one year. It's not going to be what you believe in three years. The beauty of entrepreneurship is it forces you to evolve heavily as a human being. And if you manage it properly, it is one of the most beautiful experiences you will ever ever have in your lifetime. And your children are going to be witness to this. So it is imperative that you treat it like the gem, that you treat it like the true blessing that it is. For me, entrepreneurship, it gave me the most incredible opportunities. Nothing special about me, but I got to learn so many valuable skills. I had a vessel that allowed me to do incredible things for myself, for my family, for my mother, for my sister, for hundreds and hundreds of people that I've worked with, for the families of my significant others, exes even, things that I could have never accomplished as a traditional worker at at the county. It's fact. So if this is something that you're embarking on, I want you to hold on tight to it. Don't let anybody take it from you. Don't let anybody destroy it. And again, it's incredibly difficult when you have people clawing at you, especially people that you've had children with or have been married to. It's incredibly difficult, almost impossible. This I know for sure because I've lived it even as of recent. And I sit back and I watch these amazing women entrepreneurs, Boss Lee, Cody Sanchez, Leela Hermosi, these beautiful, brilliant women who I know are busting their asses 14, 18 hours a day, year over year over year over year, working on themselves tirelessly. And I wonder, gosh, could that have been me? If I wouldn't have made the choices in my personal life that ended up combusting, (laughs) could that have been me? Could I have had that momentum? Could I have had that impact? Could I have been able to build that undeniable proof, that, that belief in myself? I sit for hours admiring and watching them. They are my real life role models today. And so that's why I I decided to record this podcast because regardless of what age you are, who you decide to marry, who you decide to have children with is going to be the most important decision of your life. And we enter into these relationships so freely, right? Not assessing any of the risk, not thinking about the exit strategy, not thinking about the day that nobody's in love anymore and there's a lot of anger and bitterness. And oftentimes it happens because one of the people in the relationship decides to grow and decides to start to live their dream. And the other party wasn't prepared for that. And then things to start to unravel. And then of course you get to the finale, but the finale is never the finale, especially when you have children. And that co-parenting is a long 18 years, ladies and gentlemen. So imagine building yourself, building your business, and also finding that new norm of being a single parent. It's not easy. Which leads me to number five. You must find a network. A network of people who have achieved what you are wanting to achieve. As close to apples as apples as you can get it. 
finding other single parent entrepreneurs who have already gone down this uncharted territory. So they can advise you and support you and help you with your day-to-day mental struggles. Oftentimes it's not even the finances or the logistics. I mean, you're an entrepreneur, you're great at what you do. You're obviously savvy. You obviously want to solve complex problems in the world. You can figure out money and logistics. But when there's that mental weight, that mental anguish, just fighting and arguing and pulling and pushing. You can't think. You can't think straight. And as an entrepreneur, again, you have to always be on and you have to be creative and you have to have juices flowing and you have to show up for other people at a high level. It's not just about you anymore. And how do you do that when you have all of this drama taking place to the left on a regular basis, year over year over year over year, and it doesn't seem to go away? Well, I made it this far. I've been in entrepreneurship over 20 years and I've experienced all of what I've explained. Thankfully, I didn't throw in the towel, but could I have done better? What was the opportunity cost? I wish I had the resources of podcasts. I wish I had the teachings of Andy Frazella. I could have been a different animal. And so that's one of the reasons why I show up for you to let you know that there are resources out there and don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your dreams. But remember, you have to build yourself into something that is undeniable. And that is not easy, but it's 100% worth it. 